we live? What's good, great people? I am Iza Moon, and I have a special guest in the building today. Sandra Marie, she shall be joining me for a frank conversation. Man, she's a, a fashion psychologist. <laughs> she's the founder of Cindy, uh, a fashion coaching program, entrepreneur, and social engineer. And she believes fashion is a way to express, feel, and connect. You guys, I'm pleased to be joined by her this evening. Okay. Let me go ahead and add it on in here, you guys. And shout out to my sponsor once again, that's Spirit Tree. If you are in the Austin, Texas area, please utilize Spirit Tree for our, all your food needs. That was Good evening. How are you doing this evening? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm all, I'm all right. I'm all right. I'm over here fumbling over your introduction. I feel, I'm over here feeling terrible. I don't know what's going on. Forgive me, forgive me, forgive me, please. And did I, did I pronounce that correctly? Is it Cindy? Yes, perfectly. Okay, good. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Man, uh, I'm, once again, I'm very thankful for you joining me this evening. Uh, so, yeah. Fashion psychologist, mm -hmm. please tell me how how'd you, how'd you get how'd you get into that? How'd you get into fashion psychology? So I come from a lineage of fashion entrepreneurs. Um, mm. From my ancestors, they all were in fashion. It's just that it to them it was you know a means of survival. So it's been mm. in the genetic line for so long. Um, so I'm a creative at heart. So expression is a part of my being. Um, right. expression is what grounds me. So fashion has been always a part of my passion. So that started from when I was really, really young, um, whether it was coloring, whether it was actually drawing, doodling, whatever. Um, I had a natural inclination to just kind of seek, seek that out. Mm -hmm. um, so not only is it in my genetic line, but I actually have a natural affinity for it, the creative world. Um, but I also have a deep understanding of people. I'm passionate about people and understand their behaviors and why they think what they think and, you know, how do we improve as a collective? So I, I am formally educated in psychology, uh, which was great. Uh, I learned a lot, but I felt like everything that has been passed down through education, that's not the end of it. So all of the founding fathers, it's been great. Everything that you guys <clears throat> researched and studied, that's been wonderful. But as human beings, we're continuing to evolve. So we have to evolve with these theories and these ideologies. And I said, what is it that I, how can I make this my own? Mm -hmm. um, in what way can I bring in who I am into this field of psychology? And how can I do it in a creative and an innovative way where people are going to be inspired for their well-being? People are going to want to change people because healing doesn't have to hurt, right. right? Going through life transitions doesn't have to hurt. Um, so I began exploring when I was working as a social worker in Massachusetts. And my goal as a social worker was to lead these clients to self-sufficiency so they can actually get out into the community and be able to fend for themselves and their families. What I realized very quickly while doing that is clients we're back into the system. So it's like, how is that? Why is that? There's a revolving door here. And it seems like we just keep repeating the same thing. We give them, we're giving them tools. We're gaining the resources, which is going to be the financial aspect of it. And right. we're putting it down. But for whatever reason, it's not working. So I said to myself, if we all are experiencing one human experience, why is it that some people are getting ahead and some people are falling into that sunken sp space for um, lack of terminology. Um, so I said, if I can begin d digging deeper within myself to understand how is it that when I'm going through these trials, I'm able to rise above it. So I started dissecting what it is that I do when I don't feel well, when I'm not up to par. And the reality of that, it was simple. I had expression. I had an outlet. And my outlet was fashion. So whether I was feeling good, or not, I'm amplifying. So if I'm feeling great, I'm literally making that my, it's like a mantle. It's, it's my mantra. It's my physical mantra, right? And I began bringing out my personality and everything, every facet of me within my wardrobe and also setting my intention with my, within my wardrobe. We all know that we care, we, some of us create vision boards, right? Right. which is a visual component. Um, some of us have a whiteboard <clears throat> writing out our dreams and our thoughts, maybe for the month, for the year. Or some of us have mantras that we have by our bedside or maybe in the bathroom or in the hallway, wherever it may be. Right. 
These are things that you're looking to manifest. These are things that you're looking to align to you. But what if you can do that and actually carry it with you? Right? So you're basically wearing your mantra or like you're wearing, you're wearing uh, what, what it is that you're trying to manifest. You're wearing that. You're wearing your, what you're trying to manifest. You're wearing your identity. Hmm. You're honing in on that identity. So I have a question for you. For sure. What, the colors that you're wearing now, what, what made you pick those colors? So it's sophisticated for me. It's classic. Right. And I'm looking to, in a way, uh, represent my silhouette, right? My sophistication. Um, black to me means dominance. Black to me means classic in, in, in ways that my personality um, wants to be maybe more reserved in this moment, right? I want to have some form, of, some, some form of dominion over my day. I want to make a statement. Got you, got you, got you. And what, it, does, it, does it extend to your jewelry as well? For sure. Okay, got it, got it. So well, well, why the earrings? I know, I, it's, I, I, know it's, uh, I know it's some random, but I, I kind of, I actually want to know because I'm, as you as you're speaking on, I'm like, man, like that means that everything that you picked was like it's for a specific purpose. And at, for me, I'm just like, okay, what will make me look professional in this in this setting, right? And so I put, I, you know, I, I always I go for a suit. I make sure the top and the bottoms match, and then you know, make sure the tie looks looks up to par, and make sure you know I look nice for it, right? But and that's 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 the extent, right? But you specifically pick these things for each each item to 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 represent something in regards to how you want to be how you want to be viewed but you go you go a step further than i do so i'm i'm, I'm my, my my curiosity extends to the to the earrings what made you pick the earrings well it's gold mm. that's right. taking me back to where i'm from i'm from africa my ancestors are from there so it's gold uh and it being a circle is giving me the impression of circle of life, meaning that I'm grounded. So it's a reminder for me of what that is. And I wanna go back to what you said about when you put piece your outfit together. When I piece mine together, I am representing me. Right. And I'm bringing, I'm giving you an introduction to me. I'm giving you a vis physical representation of that visually. So when you said that you were wearing, you decided to put that together, um, you didn't say according to you, you said according to professionalism. Who defines that? Bob, I, you're right. You're absolutely right. <laughs> I go, I'll go off of like what I've been taught, you know, by my, by my parents, right? About what professionalism looks like, right? How you're supposed to, how you're supposed to look for whenever you're, you're in a, a in a room in a circle full of people or a room full of people that you know can help put you into a into a, a different position or you know or, or you're making a, an introduction right you want to make a good first impression wear a suit right so that's 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 the definition of professionalism that i have that was instilled in me that i kept right but um give me your thoughts though what else has have you been carrying that doesn't necessarily have to do with you. So you, you're basically masking yourself according to society's terms. Right. And when you begin uh, designing yourself to fit that mold, you are no longer operating in your frequency. You're no longer operating at your highest potential because you're thinking of other people and how you want other people to receive you. You're not looking for other people to receive you. You're looking to walk into the world and for you to be respected and accepted no matter what so it, it's really not about professionalism what is that you define that i have had jobs where my hair was was all sorts of colors pink blue you name it purple you name it and these were pretty much conservative positions i did that i went on interviews with pink hair i got that job the question is why? Why is it that everyone else is black and white and here I am with pink hair, but I get the job? Because it's not about what you look like. It's not about that. It's about who you show up as. 
And that's a moment of exchange where you greet someone and say, hi, my name is Sandra. Guess what? I'm giving you energy. I'm giving you all of me. So you're not looking at what I'm looking like. You're actually respecting me. Man, you know what? You're, you, I, 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 I have nothing but respect for that, for, the, for, 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 for what you just said, because I'm really thinking about, you know, the things that, that, that were instilled in me while, like, that my mom was telling me about, like, oh, how I should appear, right? Because that's the first thing that they would take in. But you're so right. That exchange of energy is very, very much important. I, I thank you for, thank you for that. Like you, thank you for for expanding for expanding my my thought process on that. Sincerely, like that's 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 real. Like I I've, I'm so caught. I'm still so like locked into like you know those um those 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 things that that that, I, that were instilled in me from from years ago. That you know it's 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 manifested and it's grown and so it's like okay, it's still there. Even as you know, I work on different other aspects of myself. It's like hey that. That one, that one thing, it's, it's still locked in, right? I, I, I gotta, I, I feel like I should grow out of that because it, you're right, you know. I, let me, I give, define let me give you an example of how that bleeds into other areas of your life because it Go does. Mm -hmm. Because your career that you choose is not according to you; mm. it's according to what you, it's expected of you. Mm. Some people marry according to what is expected of them not what they want. <laughs> hey, you know, yo, here, here, here I am, like, literally pursuing, pursuing this dream. Uh, and, and I'm like, you know, I, you, you gave me, you gave me, you're giving me quite a lot to think about. You give me quite a lot to think about, sincerely. Like, I, dang. <laughs> uh, I appreciate this. I, re, I appreciate this. Man. So is this like, do you feel like these are the, the things that you try to get people to, to, to analyze whenever it comes to their, their lifestyles? Or what other, what other things do you, do you try to get folks to think about when it comes to the life that they live? It's about your health and well-being. Mm -hmm. That's what it's about. So I, your identity is a main component of that, particularly when it comes to fashion. Right. If you can do that, if you can allow yourself to go inward, to explore yourself inward, to release and begin building off all of the fundamentals that you actually believe in, you are rising in power. Mm -hmm. There's nothing more powerful than that. Just like they say, financial confidence. There's nothing greater than that, right? There's also nothing right. greater once you've solidified your identity. So what I do... In How do... Oh, I was gonna ask how do how do people solidify their identity? You know, how do like how do they what what are some things that they can do to figure out who exactly they are? Spiritual practices. <laughs> so you may hear me say spiritual practice, and some people are quick to just jump to religion. It's not about religion. Religion and your act of faith within that religion is a part of your spiritual practice. But your spiritual practice, is, it's what grounds you, what brings you your well-being, what centers you. So what that looks like, it may be nutrition. What, is, what am I eating? What does my daily meals look like? Am I eating enough? Am I drinking water? Am I drinking enough? So nutrition is a part of that. Um, physical workouts, working out, going for walks, weightlifting dancing that's a part of your spiritual practice these are things that are going to allow your body to be at rest to be at its baseline so you can optimize the quality of life you're looking to experience yeah. meditation that's, the... that's an important one it's a very important element because it allows you to literally be in this present moment our mind is constantly going thinking about things from the past thinking about getting to the next step, thinking about tomorrow, becoming anxious. So what meditation is going to do as a part of your spiritual practice, it's going to bring you in this moment, this current moment that we're in, and it allows you to be, to be available for yourself and for others around you. Is there a timeline? 
as to that um, people should follow to, you know, because I, I know there there are phrases like that I've been, I was told like, you know, from conversations that I've had where like, oh, if you don't know who you are by the time you're 30, then, you know, you're living life wrong, right? Um, is, the, is that something that should be taken into consideration when trying to figure out your personal identity? No. Hmm. Time is an illusion, um, especially when it comes to your well-being. The real, the real word we want to use in it is intention. How intentional are you about being healed? How intentional are you about your growth? That is what it's about. It's not about age. It's not. Age has nothing to do with your, your um, transformation. It's about See, being I See, I've, I've, um, I've always, and that's another thing that I've, uh, that's another thing that I've been locked to as far as like mindsets go, you know? So are, is it, are we on a constant journey of discovery? Because Absolutely. I feel like we evolve through each experience that we go through, right? You know, something, some piece of knowledge can immediately just change how you, how you think, how you feel, even how you act, you know? Um, uh, what do you, what are your thoughts on that? Like, is it that we are like are constantly like, rediscovering rediscovering ourselves or what? yes yes life is a journey yeah so what does a journey mean to you my journey a journey in general it doesn't have oh to a be journey in general oh a journey yeah. is literally um like yeah it is it is literally just a discovery like the word that immediately that that comes in my head is discovery like trying to find something trying to find something new or trying to go to a place where that um Either that you've been to before or that you've never been, right? But you're trying to find some you're trying to find something. That's discovery and, and trying to find something go come to mind immediately when it comes to this okay. uh, journey. So if you know that life is a journey mm -hmm. and you're continuously finding something, whatever right. that may be, which means that you're always going to be in transition, mm -hmm. right? Because there's always events in life, whether on a micro level or on a macro level whether it's a celebration, whether it's another birthday, whether it's a life event, maybe getting married, having children, those are all life events. So it requires you to constantly keep growing, right? Death is a transition in life. So you know that you have to show up each and every time, but how are you equipped to handle these different types of life transitions? Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Um, I, I just... I, I the 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 death is a transition part. I it's kind of you know it's kind of um, a little bit harder for me to grasp in the sense of like I feel like when you know death is it death is it is the end. You know I, I always thought of death as like okay well this is the end of this you know of this chapter and then um, whatever happens beyond death is is you know is something that we can't we can't see we we don't know how people evolve after death you know. But uh, we know how, but we can see the impact that death has on those that that um that are still alive, right? And how you know people take those events and evolve and grow with 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 that, you know. But I I guess um yeah I I I couldn't I couldn't really like follow the whole death as a transition part somewhat. Okay, I'm gonna give you an example. Yes, so you, we can think think of death literally as this physical being is now no longer here, right? right? But you also can look at death as when you hit a plat plateau, right? right? You can use fitness, for example. After yeah. doing the same thing for so long, you've hit a plateau. Yeah. So that is death, right? Death to that experience. Or if your ego, you have an ego that's functioning and operating higher than it's supposed to. And you have to some way, somehow rearrange that. So some people use the terminology, death of the ego, right? Death just means you've reached this point where the transition now has to happen. So if you look at it in that way, you can, you can apply it to every facet of life in that way. And I think the biggest issue we have because we're talking about death right now is that 
we don't acquaint ourselves with death. We just experience the pain that comes with death because we don't identify. The key word is identify what it is for us. Similar to what I was talking about, discovering your identity through wardrobe is what's going to give you the freedom to operate at your highest potential in your true identity. That's real. That's real. You know, we talk about journeys and I, I kind of want to get, I kind of want to understand a little bit uh, more about you. Where are you on your journey? Like I, you know, I've, I've said this before, that, you know, um, success isn't, isn't the destination, but it is the journey. Like, you know, actually like traveling. So where exactly are you on your journey of success? So success, mm -hmm. everyone, it's left to your interpretation of what success is. Right. My idea and my definition of success is meaning that I'm actually living in my true being, living in my true form, that I'm going after all the things that I believe in and that I'm not allowing anything to get in my way. I'm not allowing myself to be discouraged. That is success for me. Uh, when it comes to money, for example, that doesn't mean I've reached any form of success because anything that's tangible is attainable. I like that. I like that. I like that a lot. Anything that's tangible is attainable. I'm going to put that in my notes. <laughs> that's, that's, that's real. Um, where, 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 so, well, you kind of, I, you kind of answered my next question because if you, you're just trying to, you, you're just trying to live, you're trying to be, you're just basically trying to make sure that you, you are you. And I was going to ask, but well, where you, where exactly are you trying to go? You know, what, what, what heights are you, I guess my question was going to be, what heights are you trying to reach when it comes to these, uh, these different things that you, that you are in, involved in? Um, but it, but it, you, you kind of hit it on the head if you're just trying to be your best, if you're just trying to be your best self. Um, man, I, 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 it, I, 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 I I'm really still kind of floored by, you know, the amount, the amount of like knowledge that you like and how, how grounded you are in you, like where, what, what sparked this? Like how, like what sparked this? Like, Hey, you know what? Being me is the best thing for me. Like where, where, where did you get, what gave you this mindset? Like, well, there's so many contributors to who I am, right? Mm -hmm. So that's going to be some family members. Right. It's going to be people that I met in passing. It's going to be in the line of work that I've done. Um, but mostly I remember being, I live in deep reflection. And I remember as a kid, just wanting to understand why the world is operating in the way that it is. You know, some can say you're intuitive. And some can say you're just in deep reflection and you're able to process information and ask yourself questions to actually guide yourself to where you want to go. So for me, it's, you know, I had a grandmother who was with us all the time. There was no distractions back in the day. Like social media was non-existent. So you had to spend a lot of time having conversations. So I had a lot of keen conversations with my grandmother. Mm -hmm. asking, I was always an inquisitive child asking questions, right? And I, I had the space to be seen and heard. And I know what that feels like. But I also, through the course of time, knows what it feels like not to be seen and heard. Because just because I got that lesson from my grandmother doesn't necessarily mean I got that lesson from my parents or the world that I'm in. I'm Cape Verdean, first generation Cape Verdean American. So what that means is that my parents came from West Africa. I was born in America. My yeah. So, so that's two identities, right? Yep. But I also have myself. That's my third identity. So you're in a world, one world, global world, where you have expectations coming from the left, expectations coming from the right, but I also know what I want. So I know what it feels like to be suffocated, to be told or not given space to do what I want to do. So I made a vow, I took a vow for myself that I needed to set myself free. I was no longer captive to society or what the expectations were. How, I, 
I know ex I you know I know exactly what you mean in the sense of um, because you know I'm first like, first generation Nigerian uh, myself. Like my parents immigrated from Nigeria over here and they had me, and uh, you know I I'm being expected to act a certain way. I mean, expected to act a certain way as a Nigerian and as an American as well it is uh it's crazy. So I'm you know it, it's really just recently till I started like trying to find my own own path of and you know try to live my uh, as as my best self but um like i said for my dress i'm still inspired by the things that i learned from my parents right so um yeah like I, the, the, those things are still there right and now it's like you know what i'm gonna throw away this tie hey <laughs> like this next interview i'm gonna wear a black turtleneck with this gray jacket though, because that's what I wanna wear. Like I oh my God. Thank you for this conversation, by the way. I wanna say sincerely, like I appreciate you. Um so how did how did you get into holistic health though? Uh like, so you I know I know um it's somewhat of a trend a departure from the last thing that we're talking about, but I kind of uh, I wanna know how did that how did that, you know, uh get into your life how did how does that uh affect you now and, and why you feel like that is the best thing for you mm -hmm. it's the best thing because i know what it feels like to not be healthy mm. mind body and soul i know what it, there was a point in my life where i wasn't healthy um yeah. where my meals range from processed foods and also whatever whatever you see advertised in tvs uh news ads that was my lifestyle, right? Um, I didn't work out, so therefore, you know, I'm going through life stress. Um, I didn't have an outlet. The only outlet that I had was the the, the fashion component, but that in, you need more, right? You need more to solidify your identity so you can unlock your creative powers. And your creative powers comes from your identity. It comes from the confidence that you gain from that. Um, so I went on a journey. Um, and it started with clients. I had clients where I said, okay, how am I here to assist you? but they're missing elements of me, right? Mm. So mm. I began creating this curriculum, leading myself to, you know, an awakening where I'm healthy physically. So I started with the physical component and I realized very quickly that it alleviated a lot of the stressors of life. It wasn't enough. Um, I realized that, you know, we have moods, right? You have personalities, you have emotions, and you have moods. All those things can be triggered and altered, right? So if you're not eating healthy, where's the energy level that you need? Not only that, I had, I had been suffering since I was about 13 with, you know, painful periods, painful menstruations. I went to every doctor possible. No one can tell me anything about that. And once I began doing my own research on nutrition and I started aligning myself with everything that I was learning and eating whole, all of that went away. So you're telling me I spent so many years in pain as a child, but then I come across real food, whole foods, herbs, and all of that. And now I'm free from that. Now I have energy that lasts me for days so what's really going on? So now I have the physical component. I have the nutrition. Now I need to bring myself into this present moment. You know, we all go through, through life. And some of us experience trauma at a micro level. Some of us at a macro level. But things that pain you, they can pain you, but you don't have to suffer from them. So mentally, I needed to unload some of my experiences that I held on to that I didn't speak to people about. And once I started doing that with meditation, I realized that some of the thoughts that I had weren't real. It was just emotion that was not expressed. And because they weren't expressed, I created a story from it. So that's how I started because I needed to know that if I'm going to help others, I needed to be able to be in a space that I can help um, because I'm grounded and balanced. I can't give to you what I don't have for myself. Man, I, I like it. 
I can't get to you if I don't have my I love it. I love it. Um Dang, I'm sorry. Like I'm just I, it's it's a it's a lot of things that that um that you're saying that are making me reflect on on myself and and my journey. And so like uh the quit like there there are so many questions that I'm having that are just popping up in my head like man, I want to ask this but I'm gonna be really just thinking about you know the process of the process of uh of growing, um. But I did want to touch on on something when you said trauma at a micro. We experience trauma at a micro level and at a macro level. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, for for those of us that for the for the rest of us that are you know, first generation, like you know the the children of the children of immigrants, right? Mm -hmm. Um, can you speak to some of the traumas that we carry, the but that we um that Others can't really, um, others can't really talk about. You know, um, I know for a fact that you know one of one of one of mine was being called an African booty scratcher. You know, growing up, right? That was that was the that was the, that was everyone's go to, right? And I, you know, but um, you know, holding holding on to that to the point where you know it would um, it would impact you know uh, my interactions with those that you know uh, those that look like me. It made me more apprehensive to um, to uh, African, uh, my fellow African Americans, but it's like you know, I, I I feel like I shouldn't have felt that back then, right? Eventually, it, 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 it you know through therapy, I let it go. It, I I let it let let it go, but you know, um, what are some traumas that that uh first generation immigrants experience at a macro level that we don't really just talk about or we don't really we just kind of like gloss over? Well, it's gonna vary because each mm -hmm. culture is its own. Right. And it also depends on where your location is. You know, I'm from Boston, mm -hmm. so right. uh, there's a huge Cape Verdean community there. Um, mm -hmm. But also you realize very quickly, you know, there's there's a division. There's, there's a division simply because I'm Black, right? right? So I'm Black, but I'm also Cape Verdean, which is my cultural identity. Um, so I can say I can't say what it's going to look like for the collective because it's going to be different. It's going to it's going to vary. Um, but I can speak on my experience. And my experience was that um, people didn't think that you were smart enough. Okay. They didn't think that you were smart enough or capable. So I think that is that's a lot, you know, especially knowing that my teachers mostly were were white. Right. You, you do not represent me as a black woman. So from a very young age, you automatically have this barrier because you don't see you represented around you. Of course. So that's, that's traumatic yeah. in very itself much. at a macro level. Yeah. Very much so. What are some, uh, you know, besides, uh, trying, besides trying to eat right, um, you know, exercise, Go to therapy. What are some other uh, What are some other things that people can do to uh, get over their over their traumas? So I like to say this. Yeah. Healing takes a combination of things in order mm -hmm. for you to actually let go and release. So talk therapy is great. It's always great to have that space, safe space and that professional person that's able to navigate and gain a deeper understanding of you and have you gain a deeper understanding of yourself. But with that said, there's also other things. That's, that's, a, that's a moment thing, right? There's things that you can put in practice that you can do daily that's going to assist the talk therapy. Physical exercise. A 30-minute workout is equivalent to one antidepressant. Mm, I'll take a lot of antidepressants now. <laughs> hey, you know? Huh? You, you, you get what I'm saying? How powerful Yeah, is yeah, no, I know. I definitely, no, I said I take a lot of antidepressants. I'll be in the gym for hours, like literally hours on it. But yeah. yeah it, it's, 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 it's a beautiful thing, right? When you can actually take that time to work on your physical body to release. Um, so there's so many different elements to the healing modalities that you would need to incorporate into your life. So that's going to be nutrition is number one. So right. you know that your immunity is built in the gut. So you know that also that's directly correlated to your brain, right? What goes in the gut shoots up into the brain. 
So if you're putting chemicals, chemicalized foods into your body, what is that doing for you? It's not sustainable. Eventually you will crash. So watching what you eat is imperative to your success. You need energy. You need the right kind of energy. How are you going to attain that if you're only putting chemicalized foods into your body? We have a 24 hour period. You're sleeping maybe eight of those. You're working maybe eight to 10 of those. If you're eating chemicalized foods, where is the energy that you're going to need to handle that? And also tend to people, your family. You're going to be at work. And once you get out of work, you have a family to take care of. Maybe you have a partner that needs to have you in the moment. So food is extremely important for that. So you have the physical, you have the food, the mental component. You have the talk therapy as the mental component. But you also need the, to practice the mindfulness and the meditation. They go hand in hand. So meditation is a concentrated moment where you allow yourself to literally relax your entire body, your nervous system. So if you can relax the body and begin working on the muscle within your brain to allow you to focus, the more you meditate, the more peace you bring to your body, the more present you are, the less likely it is for you to react. Mindfulness. Is, mindfulness is an expanded version of meditation. So what that means is, what you learn how to do in one still moment, you learn how to carry that through your days. You are self-aware. That's what the expanded version of meditation is. It's mindfulness. I appreciate that. I need to, um, I need to, I need to practice both. I, I need to, I definitely need to practice both. Uh, I feel like that, that'll, that'll help take me to the, to the next level in, in, in my life. Um, now, uh, and another element that I want to, I think a lot of times we lose sight of this. Mm -hmm. The earth is so great, right? right? So you know that there are grounding techniques that are connected to the earth. There are studies on it where being barefoot and walking on the grass is magnetic. It brings you a sense of peace and calmness. Sitting under the sun also has its benefits. Taking a walk, admiring nature as it is, whether through a forest or walking through a garden, that also is a different element of grounding. Sitting outside and allowing the air to brush by you, the sun to kiss your skin, and for the sense of the world to seep within. The fresh air, that's a grounding experience that allows you to stay connected. That is a part of your process. So the physical component is important, the food component is important, the mental component is important, but also your well-being of being connected to the world around you is extremely important. You need all of these things, including the talk therapy. You need all of them to function. And I like to think of the body and our human experience as particularly you know, human beings as the earth. You need multiple elements of the earth in order for the earth to function. It's similar to ourselves. I've um, I definitely can feel you on that. Uh, sitting outside in the sun, like that is that is absolutely amazing. I I I, I definitely I I enjoy that, but um, I haven't been able to walk barefoot on any grass because uh, I'm in Maryland now and it's like thirty something degrees, so it would not be prudent for me to do that. But I definitely understand the uh, doing all these uh, doing all the other things. All those, all those different parts of life. It's crazy how we need so much to make sure that we're well, 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 we are well-rounded people, and that we are actually like operating in our best selves. Um, why is it that people 
tend to shy away from the work. What do you, what are your thoughts on that? Like on, on being like, ah, you know, I don't, I don't need to meditate or I don't need to go to therapy or, you know, I'm going to eat what I want. What do you, what, what is it that stops us from actually undertaking the, that work that is to benefit us? Um, there's so many reasons. Mm. Um, it could be your nuclear family, your dynamics of your family. Sometimes you have created habits and ways of living because it was mimicked to you. You had a direct model of that. That's all you know. Sometimes stepping into the unknown requires you to take a risk, but sometimes comfort is a, seems to be a lot safer. So I think those things, just those are just a few things that will have a lot of people hesitating to step out of that. What if you what if you have the desire to change, but you can't visually see the change around you? It's within you. It's kind of like journaling, right? You can have all these thoughts, and once you journal, you gain clarity, right? It's similar to if you have if anybody has a desire to change, you just have to step out. That's all that it's going to take. It's, it might seem very difficult. It might seem hard, but it's not. The clarity is only gained once you step out. It's like going on a job. You, you have, you have, you're working at a new job. Right. You, have no, you haven't developed those skill sets yet. But you go to that job. You take a risk. And you learn that. But some... Uh -oh. Visual component of that visual component of that around us, it makes it 10 times harder. And also we tend to compare ourselves to other people around us. Yeah. So if you're doing the comparison, you're not going to be able to see it. And that's why I think it's important to hone in on your self identity and your self image. And I think the one of the best awesome. ways truly is through, you know, fashion psychology. It allows you to explore yourself in ways that you haven't been able to. It's like a deep reflective state. Colors. Yes. What's your favorite color? I love colors. So I think that's the, that's the issue that we have in society is that we're limited. We're limited from the very beginning. We're mm. told to choose one thing and it starts with color from a very young age. Just like you're told to choose one career and you're taught mm. to choose one career. And I think that is the issue in our society is that you're, you're taught to limit yourself from the very beginning. That is amazing. I, I, you're, you're right. <laughs> you're absolutely right. Like, and I think about it like as from a teacher perspective, I'm like, oh, I do give out my, st my students, you know, a sheet to, hey, pick your favorite thing and then you're going to introduce yourself. And they all pick one item, <laughs> but you know, the, and, but you know, you get the kids are like, well, I really like this and this, and they're like, oh no, you gotta pick one. Right. You're right. You're you're absolutely right. And it's in the most subtle of things. It is the most subtle of things. Okay, so what are your favorite colors? I uh, I love bright colors, okay. right? And there's days that I prefer some colors over the other, based off. What are my intentions for the day? What is my messaging for the day? Um, for example, today I wanted a neutral base. I was really drawn to neutrals, um, especially knowing that it's cold and reminding me of um, of of a way that I would like to step out in, step out of. Right? It's cold, but I also want to be dominant. But I also want to feel the earth tones within my wardrobe so that's why you know i have elements of gold on me you can't see me now but i have elements of gold throughout my entire wardrobe um and i also have the the ivory you know giving me this this oasis creating this oasis for myself but also being very dominant not lax but dominant that is i i'm i've you know it's crazy um I've recently just started paying attention to like the colors, not even recently, I'd say about like 
what about like a year now where I started paying attention to like colors and like movies and what people were wearing and you know the 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 tone of things right so that it I could tell like oh okay like this is a serious part oh this is the this is the upbeat you know everyone is hunky dory party and things of that nature right and so I'm 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 realizing that you know it colors really do um they really do they do they do matter in in how you um and how you uh want to express yourself or how you want to convey uh the the uh setting of 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 a either be a conversation or uh uh you know who you are it's 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 amazing i'm actually sitting down with a fashion psychologist that that can uh that can tell me these things i i'm i'm really honored to have you on here sincerely like i i appreciate the time that you that you took to speak to me um sincerely i I have I only have two more questions, um, uh, and uh, and and that's really that's it on my part. But um, my 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 first one is so this the the entire goal of this of this show is philanthropy, right? Garnering support from those that are watching and those that will play this back later on, and putting and having them put it towards a charity or nonprofit that you care about. Mm -hmm. um, what charity or nonprofit do you want to spotlight? And why is the cause that it faces so important to you? For sure. So, you know, I have a psychology background. Right. And I'm always looking to bring people um, into a space of health and well-being. So if I were to donate and focus or bring emphasis and focus on any nonprofit organization, it's going to be the Black Mental Health Alliance. Gotcha. Focus focusing on my people because if we look at you know history and everything that was set up to work against us and everything that we have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis I think the mind is a very powerful thing if we learn how to set it free and we learn how to nourish it we are unstoppable but we need the education behind it we need the training behind it within our communities and I think this organization is doing such a great job with it most definitely, most definitely. I feel like mental health has really has the the how much we care about mental health has been on the rise, um, because we've seen so many different atrocities um, and so many different things that um, that we don't talk about. It's like there's so much that is taboo within our community that you know now it's like oh hey we it's 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 really in, it's inhibiting us and, and it's so bad now that hey y'all we actually need to talk about this we need to go out there and um and connect with people um and so i'm 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 glad i'm very glad that you chose the black mental health alliance so i'm for all those that are watching please make sure you guys throw your support behind them and uh, at the end of the video i'll be putting a link at the bottom uh to their page that way you guys can go directly to help them out um I want to say thank you so so much again for joining me this evening. Um, sincerely, uh, my last my my final question is: you know, we always want to end with words of wisdom. So, what words of wisdom would you have for someone that is trying to change their image, change how they're being perceived by the world? I would say, you have all you need. You've already, you were born complete. It's just that sometimes we get dealt certain cards and we have to navigate that, that pathway. So it's really about developing your spiritual practice. If you can learn how to develop your spiritual practice, you are unstoppable. You're an unstoppable being. You, that, you will literally fall into your superpower. And we all have that. We all are all carrying our superpower. But we have to go inward first. Most definitely, man. Thank you so much, Sandra, for joining me this evening. Um, how how can we support you? How can we? What can we do? What can we do uh, to make sure that you know we we we're, we're helping we're helping Sandra out? What what can we do? How can people follow you? What what should we be doing? Well, they can follow me on Instagram, mm -hmm. uh, Sandra Marie underscore I am. Um, I'm also in the middle of launching a uh, a business that's going to cater to mental health. 
uh, specifically bringing you um, evoking five senses um, so you can actually go inward without uh, the interruption of anybody or anything. So learning how to develop that relationship with yourself. Um, so you could always feel free to donate. Uh, my cash app is Sandra Marie 17. Um, so we want to be able to expedite this process. Uh, it takes a lot because I am not a brick and mortar. So you can support me that way. Got you. Most definitely, most definitely. So that's dollar sign Sandra Marie 17. Y'all go ahead, drop a little something, something, you know, show us some love, please, please, please. But yeah, I, I want you to know that um, everything that you have gone with speaking your success into existence, that's something that I always want to make sure that I, I convey because, um, yeah, I, I I can't wait. I can't wait to see what the future holds for you. And uh, once this is, once, you know, I've built this up and the platform is even larger, I would love to have you back on for another interview. Um, I, I feel like you have so much, uh, a wealth of knowledge to give out to the people, if that's cool with you. For sure. And make sure that, update me on your wardrobe. I know today that you, you know, you focus on everything outside of yourself and focus on, you know, the uh, definition of professionalism. But I hope that your takeaway today, one of the takeaways is that the next time you step into your wardrobe, you're asking yourself, who am I? And what is my messaging for the day? I actually, I most definitely will be. Thank you again, Sandra. Sincerely, I appreciate you. Thank you. It was a pleasure. No problem. Bye. Bye. Man, that was Sandra Marie, you guys. Uh, please make sure you follow her. Uh, and yeah, y'all be on the lookout for everything that she has going. I feel, I, I, it's like energy. The energy she exudes is like, yeah, like, nah, she, she came across with the dominance with the black. Y'all, I'm, I'm just learning, I'm just learning so much. And there's so much about myself that I have to go back and think about. If you are someone that's, you know, that's feeling the exact same way, please make sure you guys comment that at the bottom of this video. Once again, I'm Isa Moon. Um, we're going to be uh, donating to the Black Mental Health Alliance. So please make sure you guys take some time to go to donate directly to them. Shout out to my sponsor, Spirit Tree. Uh, Y'all, if you're in the Austin, Texas area, to keep them going from hungry to hangry, that little spirit tree. And um, yeah, man, so much to think about now. Uh, I'm, I'm definitely going to be uh, hanging it up on these uh, button downs and ties for a little while. I'm definitely going to be wearing my turtlenecks because that's actually what I've been wanting to wear. So since this is my platform, I'm going to wear what I want. Yeah, me. That's what I'm doing. You better believe it. All right, y'all. Uh, <laughs> have a blessed, amazing evening. And if you like the content, consider giving a donation to Dollar Sign Ease Elmo. Peace. Purchase my book, Purple Mike Wants a Bike, at Amazon.com. You can find it there. Just type in Purple Mike, type in Ease Moon, and it'll pop up. If you guys want to follow me, no, not even if, go follow me at Ease Moon underscore on Twitter and Instagram. I'm Ease Moon, and I'm not doing it unless it's fun and it helps people.